Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'll discuss about antenatal care, when to do antenatal checkup, and at last I will show how to maintain the antenatal register at subcentral level. So let us begin with antenatal care. So systematic supervision, that is examination and advice that we used to give to the pregnant woman is called antenatal care. Actually, the supervision should be regular and it should be in periodic in nature. Antenatal care, it comprises of careful history taking and examination. The examination includes general examination and obstetrical examination. Secondly, to carry out necessary investigation. And thirdly, we will give antenatal advices. Advices that are given to the pregnant woman. So, firstly, we will discuss about the careful history taking and examination. In the examination, we will check pregnant lady height, weight, whether the pregnant lady is having any kind of pallor that is located in conjunctiva dorsum of the tongue and nail beds. Then we'll check for any kind of jaundice. The size of the jaundice are noted in the bulbar conjunctiva under the surface of the tongue, hard palate of the skin. Then coming to the tongue, teeth, gums and tonsil, we'll check any kind of infection in the mouth if it is present. We will check evidences of malnutrition that are present if a person is having glossitis infection and stomatitis infection. Apart from that, we will also examine the neck. Neck veins will examine the lymph nodes. We will examine the thyroid gland. Then edema of the legs. Edema of the legs it is helpful to detect preeclampsia, anemia patient, hypoproteinemia patients and a person who is having cardiac failure and most importantly nephrotic syndrome. Next, we'll check pulse, blood pressure, and at last the examination of the breast. In the breast, we used to note the presence of pregnancy changes. Then, apart from that, we can detect any kind of cracked or depressed nipples and in other skin condition of the areola. The purpose is to correct any kind of abnormality if it is present, so that there will be no difficulty in breastfeeding immediately after the delivery of the baby. Then coming in the obstetrical examination, we will check the abdomen. So in the abdomen, we will check the tonicity of the abdominal muscles, presence of any scar, incisional or a presence of any hernia or other skin conditions or any kind of infections. We will check the fundus of the uterus. We will check whether the fundus of the uterus is just palpable above the symphysis pubis at 12 weeks or not. Then coming to the vaginal examination, in here we use it is done in the antenatal clinic or we can do in the subcentral level. So for doing the vaginal examination, we have to put the patient in a dorsal position with the thighs flex along with the buttocks placed on the foot end of the table. We should wash our hands uh, with soap and water and we have to put sterile gloves before examining the patient. So at first we will do inspection. So for inspection, we have to separate the labia with our left hand by using left two fingers, that is our thumb and index. Then we have to note the character of the vagina, whether there is any discharge present. If it is present, we can note it down. So it is useful to detect presence of cystocele or any kind of uterine prolapse or rectocele in the pregnant lady. Then we can come to the speculum examination or at last we can do the biomineral examinations. Then the routine investigation we can do at the subcentral level like we can check the hemoglobin of the pregnant lady. Then we can check the blood glucose level. Then in the urine we can test the presence of protein, sugar and any kind of pus. The most important thing to be noted or we can advise the client while collecting the urine is that they must clean the vulva and then only they can collect the urine in a clean container. So these are all about antenatal care components. Actually, the antenatal care it helps in screening high risk cases. Then it prevent or it detect to treat any kind of complications in the pregnant mother. It also educate the mother about the physiological changes in the pregnancy, either by showing some demonstration with the help of charts or diagrams so that fear is removed and psychological legal support is also given to the mother. Apart from that, through antenatal care, we can motivate the couple about the need of family planning also and also we can provide some antenatal advices to the couple. 
Now I would like to talk about the antenatal checkup. Overall there are total 4 antenatal visits a pregnant lady must do. The first visit should not be delay beyond the second wish period. It may be earlier if the patient desires to terminate the pregnancy. The main objectives of these antenatal visits are it will be very helpful to detect the health status of the mother as well as the fetus. It will assess the fetus gestational age as well as to obtain the baseline information and investigation. Most important thing is that it will help the mother to detect any kind of diseases if she is having during the pregnancy period. Also helpful for the mother to screen high risk cases like eclampsia, preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, etc. Also detect high risk factors. Thus, pregnancy should be regularly supervised and for that antenatal visits is necessary. The checkup is done at interval of 4 weeks up to 28 weeks, then interval of 2 weeks up to 36 weeks and at last weekly checkup should be done till the time of delivery. Also the most important thing to be keep in our mind that first visit it should be around 16 weeks, second visit 24 to 28 weeks, third visit should be done between 32 weeks and the last visit should be done at 36 weeks. So coming to the last part that is how to maintain the AWC register. So this is the mother and child protection card. So hope you all have seen in the subcenter level. This card is issued to the pregnant lady when she come to the subcenter for the first time in order to register her name for her further antenatal visits and checkup. Here we can uh, fill up the client's details like family identification, birth record, pregnancy record, institutional identification. So if it is fill up in the subcenter level, then name of the subcenter. If it is fill up in the PHC level, then town, then hospital address. Everything is written in this mother and child protection card. Generally, this card is issued in the government hospitals. All pregnant women should register within the first trimester. Secondly, at the time of registration, MCH card that is Mother Infant Immunization card, JSY card should be provided to the pregnant woman. Thirdly, eligible couple register number that is ECR number and UID that is unique identification number should be clearly indicated in the antenatal checkup register and MCH card of pregnant woman. Necessary equipments and instruments for antenatal checkup should be available and properly maintained in the subcenter as well as the PHC level like BP instruments, stethoscope, fetoscope, weighing machine, hemoglobin estimation, heuristic strip test for urine, protein and albumin and diastic strip test for urine sugar. All these instruments and equipment should be available. Lastly, all pregnant women should receive 100 iron folic acid tablets as a prophylactic treatment for anemia and TT injection. Now coming for the ANC register format, first and foremost, whenever a woman come to the subcenter, we need to record all the details in the mother and child card, then we can register in the ANC register. At first, we'll give the serial number followed by name of the pregnant woman, then we'll ask her age in years, then father's name or husband's name, then we have to provide full address of the pregnant lady then uid number that is the unique identification number we need to put in the register then gravida i hope everyone you have idea regarding gravida so gravida it denotes a pregnant state both present and past so irrespective of the period of gestation then coming to the para so we have to ask the para of the mother para it denotes the state of previous pregnancy and it will include the viability period so the viability period will be 20 weeks then LMP that is last menstrual period you have to ask to the client then EDD from the LMP you have to calculate the EDD that is the expected date of delivery then visit so if the women come for the first time you have to register the patient name then in in the first registration only you can find out the patient height weight then also you can measure the blood pressure of the client then you can measure the hemoglobin then 
you can also do the urine testing where you can find or you can detect the presence of sugar in the urine or protein in the urine then coming for the antenatal checkup second visit similarly we have to fill up all the details then third visit also we have to fill up all the details and at last the fourth visit so if any client is having high blood pressure or suppose if a client is having low hemoglobin then there is a chance that that pregnant lady will be at high risk so for the high risk cases we will make this extra column and we'll mention all the abnormalities of the client then we can do teleconsultation according to the pregnant lady problems and if there is necessary that after providing medications also the patient is needed to be referred then we can refer the client we can mention where we have referred the client and after that another column we can make is follow up we can we have to advise the client to do follow up then after the delivery of the baby we have to put the delivery date so this is all about the maintenance of the antenatal register in the subcenter level hope you all guys got brief idea regarding antenatal care advices antenatal visits and at last how to maintain antenatal care register at your subcenter level so for more videos you can comment down in the comment section below any topic you want to discuss along with me and if you have any doubts then also you can comment down in the comment section below thank you